and I thought I was going to get out and work on like, you know, 57 Chevys and all kinds of stuff. And you got in the real world and I realized everybody drives, uh, you know, escorts and, uh, you know, Tauruses and uh, things I don't care if they run. <laughs> And then I found motorcycles and got into those. And uh, so I'm still working on old stuff. My intention was always to work on old machinery. You know, I can fit six of these in the same spot as one old car. <laughs> so it's like six times more of the fun. You know, I pretty much drove myself. And I managed to talk my, well, my way into a job at a, a, a shop that just did old BMWs. And I learned from there. I met Chad on a blind date several years ago. Awesome setup. Um, he was introduced to me as Motorcycle Chad, and no last name, and I thought, well, this is interesting, you know. So I found a motorcycle on Craigslist, bought it, took some lessons, now I ride around. Absolutely love it, but my favorite part of it is all the outfits you get to wear, because it's vintage, and boy, can you get a bunch of stuff to go with your bike. This is what I like. I like finding problems and fixing them. You know, I like coming across stuff that uh, we've never seen before. Like, people have an amazing way of destroying things. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. The thing I like about the old bikes is there were so many different ways to do things. As you look at the, uh, at the different models, everything was very different. And you know, to look at the way different engineers figure out different ways to solve different problems is interesting. You know, to take some old bike you haven't seen before and look at it and be like, oh, I see how they did this. I see what they were thinking, you know? And sometimes they're good ideas and sometimes they're worse. And sometimes you look at them and you're like, why didn't this catch on? This is, this is brilliant. And Chad's best quality as a mechanic is that he's going to treat your bike as if it were his. He wants to put the extra work into it because he treats it as his bike. It's his bike while it's here. And that makes a difference. Because people like we come to us because they don't like the dealer. But the dealer is that kind of sterile. You know, that could be the parts guy this week and next week it might be a different parts guy or service guy. And they, there's no, there's really no relationship with the mechanic. There's no bond. You know, it's like going to Walmart or something. Like, it's just no, like there's no connection. Um, you know, honest, sincere, interesting people who are devoted to their vintage bike and we're devoted to them as customers. And we, We've come away with tons of friends, like incredibly good friends from this industry, who we end up with their bikes, they end up with our bikes. It's a big, crazy bike shenanigan, and, and it's just good. It's, we're good to people, and they're good to us. same exact thing it's doing today. No question. Oh, did she tell you about the steam engines? <laughs> no. 20 years, 25 years. I plan on doing steam engines. Yeah, I want to restore steam engines. In 10 years, yeah, we'll still be doing this. You know, it takes a special kind of temperament. People ask us all day long, how can you possibly, how can you guys work together? First of all, I'm 20 feet away and there's a wall between us. You know, we're here all day, every day and we don't see each other that often. And it's not even that big of a building. <laughs> and I'm smart enough not to go back 100 times a day. And that, that's also why there's no intercom in the shop, so I can't be like, boop, chat to the front, boop, chat. She's got a really good personality. She works really well with people. And people really like her. When I leave work, I'm still, the office is still in my head. Like at two in the morning, like I'll be like, hey, psst, psst, what the hell's going on with Terry Polonius' bike? Psst, what's going on with the Norton? Like I want them to go out and experience um, vintage motorcycle culture and adventure and really embrace that whole, you know, sphere. That a lot of the older, like, British and Italian stuff, and they're, they were built by hand, you know, and things were crooked and <laughs> holes don't line up. You know, people had to modify stuff as not on the assembly line and stuff, and that's, I think that's kind of cool. That's a bit of personality, you know. They all sound really nice. The design is just really good. I don't know how to explain it, but it's really mostly aesthetics and sound. And that's just 
but it's always drawn me to those. I find the Italian stuff is actually kind of like a little bit overly complex. I kind of like that too. <laughs> Thank you.